Peace and peace video from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sermon text and theme this Harvest Festival are the post-Diluvian blessings spoken to Noah and his family as they go forth from the ark. Again, Moses records, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. So for the text, let us pray. Lord Jesus, bless thy word, that we may trust in thee. Amen. A couple of weeks ago, as I was driving home from Bowdle, I passed a combine out in the field, harvesting corn. Just a couple of weeks ago, July. Combining corn in July. No, this guy was not super early ahead of the rest. He was way late. Almost a year late. Without the brisk cool of the fall harvest air, his air conditioning must have been going full blast. I thought to myself, the scenario as a whole could only have been more out of place, more bizarre a sight, had it been Santa in his sleigh I saw out there in that field in the middle of July. I'm sure that farmer, though, I'm sure he found it a far more disturbing experience than I did. When I told a member this story a week later back home, all that fellow farmer could say was, it's an unusual season. You'd say the same, unusual season. In fact, I know you would, because although I have not seen that particular sight before, car corn harvest the middle of July, I have heard that phrase, unusual season. I've heard it every year I've been here. As every season, someone remarks to me, usually whispered in fatigue, it's an unusual one, Pastor. I heard it the year you harvested corn in nearly a foot of snow, the year the James River decided to overrun acres of your crops. A couple of years past, the opposite, drought conditions throughout the summer. Not a drop of rain from the sky when you desperately needed it non-stop downpour when it was the last thing you wanted. Hail when, well, no one ever wants hail. Which makes me wonder if every year, every season is so unusual, every harvest somehow not quite right, then maybe, Maybe that's the usual. That's the usual. And we're the ones not quite catching on to that fact. This would be what the scriptures have to teach. But the hardships you encounter in the God-given labor of tilling the soil are all part and parcel of our fall into sin. The thorn, thistle, and sweat of Adam's curse. But the unpredictable features of this fallen creation might lead us to know and accept our frailty before the Maker of heaven and earth. It's a pattern you find throughout the Old Testament. The ten plagues of Egypt, each of them disturbing their assumptions 
about how this creation operates. And throughout the history of God's chosen people, locusts, drought, famine, all explicitly revealed by prophets of old to be God's wake-up call to repent. Your Creator's longing that every unusual season would have us come to realize it's not God who is the unpredictable one, but that there's something not quite right with us. For just as surely as harvest time has its share of the unpredictable, so does life. Droughts of what you've assumed you needed, followed by non-stop downpours of that for which you never asked. And if you're honest, more than a few unusual seasons within your own soul, the times you look back upon and wonder why you've acted the way you have. Storms of the heart, which no matter how hard you try, keep coming back, never completely subsiding with no better explanation than that's just how it is. Which should make us wonder if so much of life is so unusual so much of our conduct with one another and our God not quite right, then maybe, maybe that's the unfortunate usual. And we're the ones not quite catching on to that fact. This too would be what the scriptures have to teach. That on account of sin, to be deprived, to have taken away, is what we deserve. A fact those in the days of Noah denied, right up until it was ultimately revealed in undeniable fashion. Waters far fiercer than the mighty James, flooding their fields, their homes, their souls into eternal hell. It's a lesson we do well to ponder today. For the floods we experienced last year around here, not only did they leave so many with an unusual harvest last fall, well into last month. But those waters left us as well with an unusual harvest festival. For five decades, Prince of Peace Lutheran Church has gathered to hear the word of the Lord before the majestic sight of a field of corn at the peak of perfection. But this year, has anyone noticed? You've all been staring the last half hour at a field full of nothing. An emptiness. This emptiness and the emptiness of everything else you've neither wanted nor expected, which the Lord would like to fill and explain today with his life-giving word. Fill that emptiness with hope. A hope like Noah's, who by faith in the word of God prepared an ark to the saving of his house and entered that ark in blind expectation of whatever it was the Lord had in store for him. Who by faith in that same word of God went, went forth out of the ark to re-engage back into a world 
God promised would continue to provide, leaving Noah and you a promise whereby our God established a pattern that over and beyond the destruction and wrath of every unusual season would be the guarantee of his all-guiding hand. When he said, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, shall not cease. Or as wise Solomon put to poetic form, a time to plant and a time to pluck up, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away. Divine words which establish a rhythm to all things, a rhythm to every season, both of weather and of life, a rhythm every farmer knows quite well. You see, for every season you've told me was so unusual, someone, maybe that very person, by season's end also tells me this is one of the best crops I've seen. As at the close of every harvest, every year I've been here, I just as surely hear the words, never thought we'd end up with what we have. And I have to tell you, just as you don't make up the observation that there's something unusual every year, you're also not making it up that there's something remarkable that every year you still get a crop. This is no blind farmer hope. This too is what the scriptures have to teach. The divine rhythm and guarantee of a good from on high which overarches your every personal loss and transcends all human reason or thought. This is the grace of God. A rhythm and guarantee grounded in the foundation of Noah's faith grounded in the fount of the grace he found in the eyes of the Lord, which is the love of God, manifested in the life, death, and eternal reign of Christ our Lord. Jesus our Savior, born in human flesh just like yours, and come to wander a fallen earth, you work with your hands. This Jesus had the same experience as you do. He had his times of feasting, his times of fasting, his times of popularity, the times Jesus was left abandoned, alone, the times Jesus encountered surprising crops with delight. I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. his share of crop failure, too. Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? And by the end, Jesus admitted that to the human eye, at least, it could very well seem his labor was all for naught. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? All to show that from a human perspective, Jesus saw life through your eyes, through your experience. But so unlike us, the sinless Son of God, none of this could distract him from what he was sent to do. Facing it all with a flawless resolve and confidence in what his father's plan had in store for you. Take away this cup from me, nevertheless not what I will, but what thou wilt.
There in Gethsemane, Jesus took upon himself all of our, as the scriptures describe them, night seasons, the dark times you and I deserve, all ten plagues of Egypt, every Old Testament devastation, all at once, as God's rightful wrath rained down upon him in our place, leaving Jesus to suffer our spiritual famine and drought in that bitter cross cry, I thirst. No sickle for this harvest, rather nails, spear, planks of wood. In a sacrifice of love left to ripen to the peak of perfection, only to be buried in the dirt. Unusual treatment indeed, the Son of God offered up on a tree. That which should not have been, all to give you an end you don't deserve. When the dirt of his grave left fallow in death for but a few brief days, gave rise in the third to the most unexpected of things. Because when Jesus rose again to life eternal, you rose with him. You, for whom he died, such that having left your sins buried him behind, this your Savior sprouting forth from the earth makes you now righteous in the sight of God. As he described himself, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit, sprouting up in the hearts of those first Easter eyewitnesses, sprouting up the same today in faith wherever this gospel is preached. The good news that on account of the forgiveness found in Jesus' name, God looks upon even this gathering today as one of the best crops he's ever seen. That by faith you might marvel at what you've ended up with. Salvation and eternal life. Now human eyes will always look about this fallen earth and see crop failure one after the next. When the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? But this gospel opens your eyes to a vast acreage before you, overflowing with blessing, overflowing with opportunity. As Jesus beckons you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. A harvest so plenteous, so bountifully quick to ripen, we can barely keep up. Laborers, not just few, never enough. As this gospel word continues to spread and grow one generation after the next. Now, sometimes it is God's plan to harvest corn in July, to lose crops to floods, for fields to go unplanted. All in God's desire that these Sabbath rests of the land might leave you with the most unusual thing a farmer can do, to sit and do nothing. Or as he puts it, be still and know that I am God. That here, in this Sabbath rest of his word, you might gain a new perspective on the whole. That to everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Renewing in your heart a confidence, a reliance on him alone and the promise that seed time and harvest 
cold and heat, summer and winter, this rhythm of his good grace shall not cease until Christ returns. So re-engage like Noah did. Re-engage with vigor into an ever-renewing earth. Re-engaging by faith in the God who promises fruit to ever sprout forth anew in order to provide you with all you need to sustain this body and life. Those two phrases I hear every harvest, it's an unusual season, Pastor. And just a few weeks later, I never thought we'd end up with what we did. I have to admit, they do make me laugh a bit to myself. How could they both be true? Because God says so in his word. Dear friends, here he has given us a perfect example. In the unusual harvest festival we celebrate today, not a crop in sight, but praising everything he provides all the same. For unusual season or not, we're still eating, aren't we? And might I say, in exemplary fashion. All by his grace and all in celebration of the same. Now the peace that passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.